you will have done, let's say, quite a few titrations, or hopefully you've done quite a few titrations in A-level chemistry so far. But when it comes to the second year, you need to start looking at them in a little bit more detail. And that's where these pH curves come in. Now, they're nothing scary. Essentially, they're just this. They're really just a titration. It's just another titration. But this time we're using a pH probe. So a digital probe that monitors the pH instead of an indicator. So the pH probe monitors changes in pH during the addition of a base or alkali really to an acid. Okay, so I'm going to be talking about bases here, but we're dealing with alkalis because of course, you know, they are soluble bases. So instead of using a rudimental indicator like phenolphthalein just to go, oh, that's the point at which it's neutralized, what we're doing is monitoring the pH during the addition of the alkali or the base to the acid. So we can see how the pH changes as we add each little bit of alkali to that acid. What I'm drawing on the left here, this is our standard setup for this pH curve. So we just got our burette set up. We've got our conical flask with our acid in. And of course, what I'm drawing here is just a pH probe. They come in all sorts of shapes and sizes, but this is a digital one, maybe attached to a computer or something like that. that just monitors pH. Really importantly is that we've got our alkali or our base in the burette. We've got our acid and known volume and concentration of acid in the conical flask and we're adding the alkali to that. And of course, that's our pH probe there. So what does a pH curve look like? So we're adding some alkali to an acid. As we're getting our results, we're going to see changes in pH, of course. And once we've got all those changes in pH, we're going to end up with the curve, the pH curve. And what that appears on are these axes, which are pH on the Y axis. So we're monitoring the changes in pH. And of course, on the bottom, this is the volume of base that we're adding. OK, so uh, obviously we start at zero. And as we add a little bit, the pH is going to change and so on and so forth. So before we've even started, what we've got is a low pH. Why have we got a low pH at zero volume of base? Well, of course, we've just got the pH probe in the acid. So we're going to have an acidic pH to start with. So we're always starting with acidic pH, or this is the standard way of doing it anyway. Now, what we do is we add increments of OH minus. We don't just run it, okay? We put a little bit in, we stop it, we record the pH. So we put a little bit in, we record the pH. Little bit, record the pH. Little bit, record the pH, and so on and so forth. And you're going to get a gradual increase in pH as you add that alkali, okay? So only in increments. You start and stop and record the pH. What you'll notice at this point, okay, as you get near neutralization, it will start to increase. And at that point, you should start doing smaller increments to get really, really accurate results. Okay. Because if you add one centimeter cubed here, you can go right through and straight through neutralization and make it alkaline. Because you know from doing titrations, you add one drop and that phenolphthalein changes straight past the color that you want. Okay. So it's about lowering the increments here to get more accurate results. Because what you'll find is that all of a sudden, it will change very, very dramatically. And then as you add more and more base, it will start to level out, okay? And what we have is this typical curve, this typical pH curve. I'm gonna try and draw in the dots now. So now I've joined these crosses, these plots, then you can see the classic pH curve that we've got. You can see that we started acidic. We've gone right through all the range of pHs. We get that massive increase. We'll talk about that in a sec. And then we end up with an alkaline solution. So of course, by the time we've gone right through neutralization, this is going to be alkaline at the end, maybe bad no pH 12 or something like that. So you can see here this gradual increase, and then we get a very, very sharp increase. This here, this is known as our equivalence point. So this vertical section is the point at which we have neutralization. And as I said, this equivalence point, that's what we're going to be referring to that as. Okay, And that's the point at neutralization. Now, using this equivalence point, if you take this, if sometimes it's not perfectly vertical here, it depends how accurate your results are. But if it is perfectly vertical, you can take the middle of this and extrapolate down and actually find 
the volume of the base needed to perfectly neutralize that acid. So this is the volume of base needed to neutralize the acid. So this is your typical pH curve. Now they do come in different shapes and sizes. We'll talk about that in a second, but these are the main points that I want you to take away from this. First point is that the OH minus, the base is added in increments. And as you get near that equivalence point, as you start to see a more marked change in the pH, then you need to use smaller increments. You can figure out about where that equivalence point is gonna be by doing a rough one to start with, okay? You're then going to get that sudden change. That's our equivalence point. Now we can use that equivalence point, that vertical section, to find the volume of the base needed for neutralization. Okay, so there's, there's some basic things that you can tell from this pH curve. There's some more in-depth things we can use a pH curve for, but we'll talk about those in the next tutorial. Now I mentioned there are different types and shapes and sizes of pH curve. There are four main pH curves that you need to be aware of and be able to explain their shapes. I'm going to tell you what they are here, but I'm going to talk about their shapes and explain why in another tutorial. These four types of pH curve that you need to be aware of are as follows. So we've got a strong acid versus a strong base. Now that is typical of the one I've just drawn on the right hand side. It's gonna look different for a strong acid when you put it up against a weak base, different again where you've got just a weak acid and a weak base. And of course we've got the other combination of a weak acid against a strong base. So there are four combos, okay, between strong acids and weak acids and strong bases and weak bases. So we got all four different combinations that we could possibly have. We need to be able to recognize those pH curves. And as I said, we're gonna be looking at that in another tutorial. So this is the basics of pH curves and how they work and how you do them. Now we're gonna look at what they tell us and of course these four different types of pH curve.